Wandering around a random forest, I won't get lost because of StatQuest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer and welcome to StatQuest. Today we're going to be starting part one of a series on random forests, and we're going to talk about building and evaluating random forests. Note, random forests are built from decision trees, so if you don't already know about those, check out my stack quest and beef up. Decision trees are easy to build, easy to use, and easy to interpret. But in practice, they are not that awesome. To quote from the Elements of Statistical Learning, aka the Bible of Machine Learning, trees have one aspect that prevents them from being the ideal tool for predictive learning, namely inaccuracy. In other words, they work great with the data used to create them, but they are not flexible when it comes to classifying new samples. The good news is that random forests combine the simplicity of decision trees with flexibility, resulting in a vast improvement in accuracy. So let's make a random forest. Step one, create a bootstrap data set. Imagine that these four samples are the entire data set that we are going to build a tree from. I know it's crazy small, but just pretend for now. To create a bootstrap data set that is the same size as the original, we just randomly select samples from the original data set. The important detail is that we're allowed to pick the same sample more than once. This is the first sample that we randomly select. So it's the first sample in our bootstrapped data set. This is the second randomly selected sample from the original data set. So it's the second sample in our bootstrapped data set. Here's the third randomly selected sample. So here it is in the bootstrapped data set. Lastly, here's the fourth randomly selected sample. Note, it's the same as the third. And here it is. Bam! We've created a bootstrapped data set. Step two for creating a random forest is to create a decision tree using the bootstrap data set, but only use a random subset of variables or columns at each step. In this example, we will only consider two variables or columns at each step. Note, we'll talk more about how to determine the optimal number of variables to consider later. Thus, instead of considering all four variables to figure out how to split the root node, we randomly select two. In this case, we randomly selected good blood circulation and blocked arteries as candidates for the root node. Just for the sake of the example, assume that good blood circulation did the best job separating the samples. Since we used good blood circulation, I'm going to gray it out so that we focus on the remaining variables. Now we need to figure out how to split samples at this node. Just like for the root, we randomly select two variables as candidates instead of all three remaining columns. And we just build the tree as usual, but only considering a random subset of variables at each step. Double bam! We built a tree, one, using a bootstrap data set, and two, only considering a random subset of variables at each step. Here's the tree we just made. Now, go back to step one and repeat. Make a new bootstrap data set and build a tree considering a subset of variables at each step. Ideally, you do this hundreds of times, but we only have space to show six. But you get the idea. Using a bootstrap sample and considering only a subset of variables at each step results in a wide variety of trees. The variety is what makes random forests more effective than individual decision trees. Sweet! Now that we've created a random forest, how do we use it? Well, first we get a new patient. We've got all the measurements. And now we want to know if they have heart disease or not. So we take the data and run it down the first tree that we made. Boop-a-doop-a-doop-a-doop-a-doop-a-doop-a-doop. 
The first tree says yes, the patient has heart disease. And we keep track of that here. Now we run the data down the second tree that we made. The second tree also says yes. And we keep track of that here. And then we repeat for all the trees we made. After running the data down all of the trees in the random forest, we see which option received more votes. In this case, yes received the most votes, so we will conclude that this patient has heart disease. BAM! Oh no! Terminology alert! Bootstrapping the data, plus using the aggregate to make a decision, is called bagging. Okay. Now we've seen how to create and use a random forest. How do we know if it's any good? Remember when we created the bootstrapped dataset? We allowed duplicate entries in the bootstrapped dataset. As a result, this entry was not included in the bootstrapped dataset. Typically, about one-third of the original data does not end up in the bootstrapped dataset. Here's the entry that didn't end up in the bootstrapped dataset. Psst! If the original dataset were larger, we'd have more than just one entry over here. This is called the out-of-bag dataset. If it were up to me, I would have named it the out-of-boot dataset since it's the entries that didn't make it into the bootstrap dataset. Unfortunately, it's not up to me. Since the out-of-bag data was not used to create this tree, we can run it through and see if it correctly classifies the sample as no heart disease. In this case, the tree correctly labels the out-of-bag sample no. Then we run this out-of-bag sample through all of the other trees that were built without it. This tree incorrectly labeled the out-of-bag sample yes. These trees correctly labeled the out-of-bag sample no. Since the label with the most votes wins, it is the label that we assign this out-of-bag sample. In this case, the out-of-bag sample is correctly labeled by the random forest. We then do the same thing for all of the other out-of-bag samples for all of the trees. This out-of-bag sample was also correctly labeled. This out-of-bag sample was incorrectly labeled. Etc, etc, etc. Ultimately, we can measure how accurate our random forest is by the proportion of out-of-bag samples that were correctly classified by the random forest. The proportion of out-of-bag samples that were incorrectly classified is the out-of-bag error. Okay, we now know how to 1. Build a random forest, 2. Use a random forest, and 3. Estimate the accuracy of a random forest. However, now that we know how to do this, we can talk a little more about how to do this. Remember when we built our first tree and we only used two variables, columns of data, to make a decision at each step? Now we can compare the out-of-bag error for a random forest built using only two variables per step to a random forest built using three variables per step. And we test a bunch of different settings and choose the most accurate random forest. In other words, one, we build a random forest, and then two, we estimate the accuracy of a random forest. Then we change the number of variables used per step. And we do this a bunch of times and then choose the one that is the most accurate. Typically, we start by using the square of the number of variables and then try a few settings above and below that value. Triple BAM! Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. Tune in next week and we'll talk about how to deal with missing data and how to cluster the samples. Alright, until then, quest on!